Well, again, thank you all for being here at this special webinar. We always say our webinars are special, but as I said earlier, this one is really special because in just a moment, I'm Mona Reyna, who's the Senior Director of New Services Development. She's gonna share TechSoup's digital assessment tool. We call it DAT, D-A-T. It's a free tool that helps nonprofit assess their digital capability and provide recommendations on how you can improve them. So in this webinar, she's gonna do a live demo. She's also going to introduce you to some areas that can help build your di digital transformation roadmap. I'm gonna let her do the talking because I'm gonna get all tongue tied. Um, I'm just let you know how you can engage today. If this is your first time here, you all know that you are on mute. Um, please use the closed caption. If you need the closed caption, just tap on that CP button at the bottom of your screen. If you have a question, go ahead and put it in the Q&A section or feel free to type in the chat room, but we prefer you put it in the Q&A section. This is being recorded. You're going to get the recording with the slides so you can follow along using that, um, that visual assessment tool in about 48 hours. You may get it tomorrow, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Raina and enjoy the webinar. Hi, Raina. Hi, Rika. Thank you so much. It's always such a pleasure to co-present with you. Hello, everyone. I'm Mona Rena. I'm the Senior Director, New Services Development at TechSoup, and I'm very excited um, to introduce you all to the Digital Assessment Tool, or the DAT, um, and how you can use the tool to make your digital plans to improve your digital capabilities. Um, so I'm going to move straight in our agenda. I'm going to cover the framework. I'm going to introduce you to a digital planning guide that we have available for you that you can use after this webinar. Uh, I'll do a live demo, and then we'll spend some time in Q&A. A large part of this webinar is actually going to be focused on pieces of the guide. I hope that at the end of the webinar, you're able to go refer to the guide and actually use it in your organization. And you know, as Rita said, come back to this webinar and be able to refer to it if you had any future questions as you are using that guide. Um, so I'm gonna jump right in. Um, this webinar is broken up into four pieces, four parts. Um, what, are, what we will cover in this webinar is a very short introduction to digital transformation for nonprofits. Uh, an introduction to TechSoup's digital transformation framework that we've created to help nonprofits um, come up with digital plans much more easily. Um, we will cover a lot of the webinar is around how to use that framework to align your digital transformation with your mission and how you know we have all the worksheets that are present in the guide can help you do that. And then finally, a live demo um, to show you the digital assessment tool, that is an actual free resource that you can go in uh, to do your assessments and get resources um, to help you build that plan. So diving straight in, digital transformation, right? Everyone's favorite word, I think. It's a word that's been used ad nauseum for the last five, six years. And certainly as, you know, post COVID, um, and a little bit around what it is and how it is different for nonprofits. Um, I love this, um, you know, this little comic strip. I've been actually using it for five years, uh, but nothing's changed, right? I think um, digital transformation, the more we find definitions around it, the more confusing it becomes. Um, you know, in a lot of my job is around talking to nonprofits and hearing what their needs are. In fact, all of TechSoup does that all the time. And I feel like in the last five years and suddenly in the last three years, the idea of digital transformation has only grown. And a lot of small nonprofits I speak to um, feel like it's overwhelming. You know, there's a little bit like digital transformation is the top priority as it says in this comic strip, but then what does it actually mean? How does it actually affect your organization? And how do you know what parts of it to keep and what parts of it to throw away, right? Because sometimes it can be overwhelming. It feels like you have to do 
everything to become digitally transformed. Um, so, you know, hearing all of these kind of concerns from nonprofits, one of the first things we did when we embarked on this idea of creating a digital assessment tool was coming up with a nonprofit definition of digital transformation. So we define digital transformation as the process of determining and implementing policies, increasing staff capacity, and specific technology systems that allow your organizations to deliver your services with greater impact to the individuals and the beneficiaries you serve to improve your decision-making processes and policy, policy decisions in your communities. What is really important about this uh, definition, the most important takeaway of this definition is that essentially you define what, what scope of digital transformation you want to do given the impact that you want to have on your communities. The second big takeaway from this is that we don't talk about technology. In fact, you know, there's just three words about technology, which is specific technology systems. Everything else in this definition is around policies. It's about increasing staff capacity. It's about processes. It's about, you know, data and your decision making. So really what we're trying to communicate is that technology piece of it and actually which software or which application you use is a very trivial part of the digital transformation. It has to follow, you know, the decisions, all other decisions that you make. So in a very short kind of way, compressed way, what is digital transformation? Essentially, it's anything that helps you do more and do more, we mean your mission and impact with less staff, money, and time. So the, the objective is increase your digital capacity, your staff capabilities, so you can do more with less. So very quickly, before we move forward, um, you know, I, I would love to just take a quick poll. Uh, we have about 95 participants. Does your organization have a digital transformation plan? Let's just see out of the 95 participants where our organizations are at. Let's give it about 30 seconds. All right, I can see that, you know, most participants actually do not have a plan. All right, so let's share the results. So you can see that only 4% of participants that, that took part in this poll actually have a well-defined and well-communicated plan. 16% say there is a plan, but it isn't communicated or defined. 3% say yes, but, I, but they don't know what the plan is. And then, you know, we have 78%, even in this group, that either are not sure or don't have a plan. And I, this is an important poll because, you know, from everything we hear, uh, post COVID, the expectation is that everyone's adopted technology, right? And I think everyone has, everyone is certainly working remote, but digital transformation and this idea of how we're digitizing and improving capabilities, that is still very removed from the daily tasks and activities in a nonprofit. So thank you so much for participating. Uh, I'm gonna close out the poll. Aretha, are you able to close out the poll? Yes, it should be gone. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so digital transformation is not just about adding technology and tools, because we all did that, and we still feel we're not digitally transformed. To truly transform, the organization has to in invest in people, process, and technology. By people, we mean how does the staff, and not just staff, but volunteers as well, relate to and understand technology. And that's really the culture of the organization that is driven by leadership and the skills and training that is provided to the staff. By process, we mean how is the technology used? 
And that's where the policies and the workflows come in. Because most of the technology today can be used for almost anything. There is technology for doing anything, right? So it's bewildering. And often if there are no processes, staff and volunteers end up using them in different ways. You, then, you know, so you get, you get data, but you get data that's collected in the wrong way. It's not as collaborative or as efficient. So policies and workflows are really, really important. And then finally, the technology. And these are the tools that you need um, to enable staff to engage in the mission um, and also to create integrations and collaboration. So you're constantly sharing the insights and the learnings that you all have together. So why is it that 78%, even in this group, does not have a plan or doesn't feel digitally transformed? Because digital transformation is complex and hard, especially for small nonprofits. The nonprofit digital transformation journey is hard. It requires time and attention, right? And what you have on the left side is just a really simple process, but that's a process that everyone has to go through. You have to identify technology needs, you have to make a plan, you have to purchase technology, you have to implement it, you have to train staff, you have to then manage and maintain that technology. And then you have to look at improving it because technology changes almost daily. Now, all of this requires a lot of time. And if you don't have a strategy, Essentially, you're expecting the team that has to be part of this, that's an integral part of implementing this, to do all of that plus focus on their mission, right? And that's one of the biggest reasons why for small and actually for all nonprofits and all organizations, the buy-in and the follow-through is really difficult. And all of the digital transformation plans fall apart. So really, the for in order for the digital plan that you come up with for it to succeed it is really important that that plan is aligned with your mission and your organization priorities your it's clearly communicated and that your staff and volunteers can see how that plan is impacting their daily service and program delivery and that is critical to the buy in from your team so that they are then investing their time in gaining the skills. They are willingly adopting and moving towards a different culture and thinking about the way that technology is used in your organization. So the biggest takeaway here is your digital transformation has to be aligned with your mission and your priorities in how you deliver your program and your services. So very, very quick second poll, who in your organization is responsible for the digital plan? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we can see that for most, most of the participants, the executive director is responsible for the digital trans for the digital plan. Not a surprise. Um, and actually, I'm I'm really pleased that there are IT staff and fundraising development team members as well, because you know, in reality, what we have found through the you know having the digital assessment tool available to nonprofits that actually the digital plan and the digital transformation plan, while it needs a leader, it, it actually needs input from almost all the groups inside the organization in order to be successful because just the executive director would probably not be able to make the right decision for the tools, the processes and the applications and training that all the staff need across the organization. 
All right. Thank you so much. Um, I, I've noticed there's a there's some questions and there's some raised hands. So I what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this portion and then leave some time for Q and A right after this uh, the first part of this organized uh, of this uh, presentation. So we can address your questions, and you don't have to wait right till the end of the presentation. All right. So last poll, I promise. Is your organization's digital plan aligned with your mission? Right, another 10 seconds. All right, so, you know, of course, we already knew that a large part of our um, group does not have a plan, but of those that do, it's really encouraging that 16% um, know exactly the digital strategy and how it'll improve the organization's impact. That's fantastic. 25% um, um, knows that the plan is aligned with the impact, though they're not sure about the entire org, but they know how it improves their work. So this is this is fantastic. And it's a big improvement from when I did this poll six months ago in July, actually. So this is really encouraging. Thank you for participating. All right. So before I move on to the digital transformation framework, I would love um, to answer any questions that there are. Aretha, you want to help me? Yeah, I'm going to scroll through the chat because um, some people have raised their hand. Um, Sarah said, we don't have a digital program, but we have a media and communications plan. How does that work in there, Mona? I think um, it's a really, it's really important for organizations to have a communication plan. Um, and actually it is communication is one of the six um, highest level priorities and categories that we do recommend through our digital transformation framework. So the fact that you have a media plan is great. I think what's important is to have an idea about how you're doing in the other categories, right? And then you know kind of know what are the there might be other points like for example you might need to really focus on um you know on your fundraising um outside or donor engagement outside of just the media communications plan um or digital security or your infrastructure so while it's fantastic that you have a media and comms plan getting an idea of how you stand in other categories is really important and actually this tool can help you do that so that you can then make a decision about if there are other areas that you ignored that you should be prioritizing. And just some comments from Kevin. He said usually the marketing department or they have a third party consultant do their you know, digital assessment. And then DJ said that IT staff generally own the plan, but everyone needs have input into it Very that's true. exactly right that's exactly right i mean and if you do have it staff that's fantastic we often work with organizations that don't have it staff or they're not big enough to have a separate it department and have a lot of accidental techies that are taking on that role so the objective of this tool is actually you can have your consultant use this tool um, to figure out if there are areas that they should have thought about, right? Um, or their IT, or your IT staff, or your accidental techies. The point is, the tool provides you with a very standard framework. It tells you here are six areas that you should know your digital capabilities in. It gives you a score, and it helps you just understand, you know, what is the landscape for your organization, and what are the areas that you should be paying attention to. So that's it, Mona. Please put your questions in the Q and A session. Um, Boss Museum did have a comment that said that they have a staff of four people, except for them. Everyone is over seventy years old, 
and everything falls on this person. So yeah, this, this that tool will be great for you. Yeah, absolutely. And you're not alone. You're not alone. Uh, please know that. I mean, that's the reason we built this tool. So I'm, I'm really happy that you're participating and you're here in this webinar. All right, so a little bit about the digital transformation framework. This is a framework that we came up with in TechSoup because we realized that there wasn't a standard framework that nonprofits could use to think about their digital capabilities and digital transformation. The framework, um, that's this figure on the, on the left, is really simple. You know, remember I said, the framework is all about your impact. So if you think about it, you know, it's a framework to help you come up with a digital plan, right? So we break it up into three parts. It's what is the goal of your plan? What is the strategy that you can employ? And then what are your tactics and the actual plan that you come up with? And that's what the framework helps you do. In terms of the goal, we start with your org mission, your beneficiaries and the impact that you wanna have on them and your strategic goals. The goals are really important, right? Because the idea is as an organization and as actually the full organization, right? All your staff, everyone needs to know that's the impact and here are the goals, strategic goals for the next two to three years that the entire organization is working towards. Once you know that, um, you know, what we've realized and we spend a lot of time doing this, we identified six areas that every organization must pay attention to for their digital capability. That's your program delivery and management, fundraising and development, communications and marketing, operations and collaboration, digital security, hardware and infrastructure. And then we created a framework which has subcategories from within each, you know, each of these topics. So within programs, you know, there's program management, service delivery, monitoring and evaluation and program insights. So what we did was we kind of created these six categories that you have to pay attention to. And then within each category, you know, we've laid out subcategories and topics and questions. So you can actually look at it and think about, okay, based on your priority, here are the topics that you're really gonna focus on. And then what the tool does is it assesses you and gives you recommendations. So you can take those recommendations and decide which of those you wanna do. And that's where your tactics come in, right? So simple, your goal is what is your impact and what are your strategic priorities for the next two to three years? Based on those strategic priorities, which of these areas do you want to pay attention to and do you want to focus on? And then based on the areas that you pick or the topics that you pick, what are your tactics to make that happen? And what we hope is that when you finish this, this worksheet becomes something that you can actually share across your organization. It is a simple way to communicate to everyone in your organization what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how it uh, affects the impact that you want to have. All right, so um, this framework is actually communicated, and all of these worksheets that I've shown you are available in the digital planning guide. Um, and as I said before, most of this webinar is around, um, you know, tips on how to use this planning guide. Um, so the first thing in the, in the guide, we have worksheets and the intention of these worksheets is for you to have conversations within your team so that you can engage them and develop a practical plan and buy in from the beginning. What we find is that often, you know, when people come into the tool and they just do it by themselves, a lot of organizations come back and send us emails saying, oh, I wish I had done it with my whole team because they realize that there's a lot of different information and knowledge about the organization with different people. We hope you can use this guide and these worksheets before you come into the tool so that you then know how to utilize the tool. So a simple worksheet is kind of thinking about your mission, your strategic goals and your focus area. So here's an example I have, start with your org mission. So say your mission, 
was to make great food for all people to support a better food system. Given that that's your mission, outline your strategic goals for the next one to three years. Once you have those goals outlined here, I've picked increase funds, raise through online events, and increase awareness of the org mission to the broader community. So based on these two goals, you can now pick two to three focus areas. And given that your goal is to raise funds and to increase awareness, essentially fundraising and communications. I pick security because I think security is always a risk, especially if you're doing communications and fundraising. Um, so I picked the third focus area as security. So now that you know which of these focus areas you're going to pay attention to, you can go into the tool and do the assessment that we have for each of these areas to then come up with your tactics. So for example, say you went in and you did the fund and you said your focus area was fundraising and your topic is fundraising event management because you wanted to do online fundraising, um, the tool actually gives you recommendations of you know, products, of training, of you know, worksheets that you can use. And you can then cherry pick the ones that make sense to you to build your plan. So with your team, you can use this guide to then come up with this kind of activity-based tactic and timeline, right? So you could have fundraising, event management, your plan is to organize three online fundraising events before December, 2023. So this is just an example that I've provided here, but what you have in the planning guide are multiple worksheets like this that you can then take and print out to have conversations with your team and your staff to come up with these kind of, you know, very high level uh, plans and ideations. This planning guide is available for free on the DAT. It's available at um, this website, assessment.techsoup.org, which we'll also share with you on chat. Um, if you go through that page, you'll find there's a request guide link that you can click on and you know, download directly. Uh, there are also many other resources that are available. So if you went into assessment.techsoup.org, there's a glossary of terms and terminologies that you might you know, want to look at or share with your staff. There are blogs and other videos, training videos that we've provided that helps you use the guide and the DAT better. All right, so before I go into the tool, I know there's a bunch of questions and comments um, that I'd like to respond to. Um, Aretha, anything that I should be looking at? Okay, let me, let me just see in the Q&A. Will we be able to have these slides? Absolutely. As Aretha said, actually, we will be sharing these slides within 48 hours of this webinar. Um, and actually, what I do is I go in and supplement the slides with as much information as I can from this uh, webinar. So you'll have a pretty, pretty decent set of slides in two days. Um, and then I'm going through the comments very quickly. Um, there is provide URL for digital planning guide, Aretha. I would request you to please do so. Yes. Um, all right. So I don't see any questions here. And, you know, if you have any, please use the Q&A and I'll certainly come back um, to the other comments. Okay. So time to talk about the digital assessment tool. Um, so how can nonprofits use the digital assessment tool? So the digital assessment tool actually has three parts. The first part is to assess your needs. And like I said, we have six separate assessments. Now, why are they separate? Because organizations have different priorities. We did not want to have you go through 83 questions if you only care about your operations or if you only care about your security. So actually when you go into the tool, 
you're faced with six separate assessments and you can choose to do whichever ones you need to based on your priorities. So the tool helps you assess your needs. Once you've finished an assessment, it actually gives you a score. Um, we actually came up with a digital capability model, which helps, the, you know, based on how you answer a specific question, um, we score you on this whole people, process, and technology. Um, and the rating is actually these five stages. So, you know, you'll know whether you're ad hoc, functional, standardized, optimized, or adaptive. Um, so which stage of capability you're in. Um, you also get that score for every assessment you do, right? Because as an organization, you might not need to have, you know, really great communication. So it would be okay if you're functional in communications, but maybe your priorities are such that you absolutely need to be either standardized or optimized for security. So we have those scores that come up individually for every assessment. And then finally, once you finish the assessment, you get a score based on how you responded in that assessment, we give you recommendations. And the recommendation types are all across various resources. We, we, we give you software recommendations, hardware, courses and trainings, services you can access, webinars, blogs, consultants you can talk to and policies. So it's pretty comprehensive and I think sometimes it becomes a bit much. So it is important for you before you go into the tool to spend a little time with the guide so you understand exactly what part of the tool you want to use. And if you wanted to use it all, of course you're welcome to as well. Um, again, this is a free web application. So you can go in, make your account. It's 100% free. In fact, anyone can make an account. So. Uh, you know, if you if you had a volunteer that's um, working on your IT, they can go in and make this account as well. Uh, it's important because this is not connected with your TechSoup account at all. This is a different resource that is available for you to use um, for your organization as you see fit. All right, so all of the assessments match the digital transformation framework and they match your guide. So once you use the guide and you come into this tool, hopefully everything starts aligning and making sense and you can use the tool um, to make better decisions about these areas and priorities that you have. Um, each assessment in the tool actually asks you questions by topic. I show this slide so um, you know, you're aware that what we're assessing is pretty comprehensive. So for example, if, you're, if you want to assess your program delivery and management, within just program management, we assess service delivery, project management, and project-related data collection. So you know, when you do the assessment, uh, we are actually asking you a lot of questions on a broad range of topics. Each of those questions is actually questioning about not just the technology you use, but how you use the technology within your organization, your processes, your policies, your staff training. So we're constantly keeping in mind this idea around people, process, and technology. And that helps us get a really good rounded view of your digital capability. And it allows us to make, kind of give you this capability score. So the way that the capability score works on the tool, and that's on the back end of the tool, it's the algorithm that's working. We're actually looking at six, um, we're looking at six um, areas. We're looking at your culture in your organization with related to technology. We're looking at the skills training that you're providing your people. We're looking at the processes that you, and policies that you have in place. We're looking at your data systems your state of current technology and the approach that you as an organization has to technology. And based on these six criteria, we are then giving you this capability score of whether you are ad hoc um, through adaptive. Um, and, you know, so the, it, and once you get the score, we have a really good explanation of why you're functional. So, that you can understand 
um, what are the changes that you might need to make in the future. Um, and of course, the idea of the digital assessment tool ultimately is to facilitate conversations and to provide you resources so that you can understand how to transform your organization. Again, when I say you, the buy-in is really important. This has to be, you know, it, it takes a village. And, it, and, and one of the biggest reasons that digital transformation fails is because you don't get buy-in. So the idea of the tool and the guide is that you're able to have these conversations, you have these resources. So it's not a question of which are the resources we pick. We tell you what are your choices. So you can go back and have another conversation with the team and say, all right, here's what we have. You know, which of these do we want to do next? And let's make a plan that we all agree on. Um, that's really, really important if you want to implement and change the way that your organization uses technology in the future. Um, and, you know, we already covered, you can use the recommendations in the tool to then develop your plan. So we left this plan at activity. You know, an example here I have from the tool recommendations is we actually have a training for online event management, which you might add into your tactics. Um, we have certain technologies like our Zoom discounts and then policies that we provide. So this is just an example, you know, hopefully you get the idea. Once you go into the tool, you can use the recommendations and build your plan. The way that the tool works is, um, you know, once you come into the tool, we actually force you to do an initial assessment. It's what we call the introductory assessment. You only do it once, you can't do it again. And the idea of the initial assessment is for you to get a very, very quick 20 minute analysis of kind of like an overview of where you stand as an organization. It gives you an initial rating and initial recommendations. But then you can actually go in and you can do any other assessment and you can do them as many times as you like. So say you were to do an assessment, after a year, you've implemented some of the resources you wanted to see if you have a new rating, you can actually come back and redo that assessment, get a new rating and new recommendations based on it. So the idea is that it's a journey. It's not a single stop. And you can continue to use this tool as a resource in your organization as you change and evolve and adopt new technology. So I am actually gonna go very quickly into the live demo. Um, and then I'll come back to the questions. I did notice there were a lot of questions and comments, um, but I'll just take us through the tool first. So this is an example of what the tool looks like. So once you go into the digital assessment tool, uh, this is your org dashboard. So remember, oh, I think, you're not seeing what I have, sorry. Let me just try again. Um, can you tell me if you can see the tool now? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So what you're seeing on my page is an example of a dashboard, an organization dashboard that every organization gets. Remember I said the idea of the digital assessment tool is that you're able to incorporate um, information from across your team. So here on your bottom right, in your dashboard, you have your team space. You can add as many members as you want into your team. You can add them, you can assign assessments to them, you can assign recommendations to them. So say you had a whole bunch of recommendations and you weren't sure whether it's a good one, you could assign it to any one of your team to go review it. Um, again, the assessment tool, the first thing that you have is your organization goal. We highly recommend that you use the space because we want your team in there. And when your team comes in, you want them to see what your top priorities are and what you're all working towards. The second thing on the dashboard is your overall or grading, right? One through five, ad hoc through adaptive. This rating is based on all six assessments because it's based on like an overall view 
However, if you did not want to do all six assessments, you can still do individual assessments and get a rating for individual categorical areas. This is really important because again, we've realized not all orgs want to be five in everything. You don't need to be, right? It just depends on your impact goals and your priorities. Each of these assessments can be done, taken as many times as you like. In fact, if you clicked on it, you can see here that in our test group, this assessment has already been taken three times. And you can see every time you take the assessment based on your answers, the score changes. Um, you can go into each one and see the results. So you can see what the difference is and why that score changed. You can print out your answers for every single one. So you can make that comparison and have that conversation with your team. What we've tried to do is provide as much information as we can as you go through this journey so that if you have any questions, you are able to collect this information. You can print everything off this tool and discuss with your team. And then finally, the recommendations. So what the tool does is based on the assessments you've done, we give you recommendations. You can see overall recommendations and your recommendations. So overall recommendations is all the recommendations that um, the tool has recommended in terms of resources for your organization. And then if your administrator assigns certain recommendations to you, those are your recommendations. So my team assigned one article to me for me to read. So that, that comes up in my recommendation. So this is another useful feature you can use to actually manage how you engage your team with this tool. Um, another quick thing I wanna point out that the um, actual recommendations that we've provided, you can see in here, um, you can very easily see what part of the tool those recommendations are for. This is for digital marketing. Um, and then you can quickly see, you know, whether it's an article, it's a blog, it's a webinar, it's a course, uh, or it's a service that we provide, a digital marketing assessment. Um, so each, and you're going to see for us, uh, based on the assessments we did, these seven topics were the ones that we actually scored the lowest in. Um, and that's what the tool does, right? It looks at where, what were the worst scores, so you can quickly go in and see, all right, so it looks like my fund of manage, management needs a little help. You can go in, see all of the resources and decide which of those you want to use um, to become better at it. So it's a fairly easy tool to use. Um, it, you know, it takes a little time, but I would highly recommend that you start using it um, so that you get familiar with it. And then, you know, there are just an upteen number of things that you could do on this tool. Um, very, very quickly, um, before we move into Q&A, uh, just wanted to leave you with just five notable tool features that you should know. Um, you don't have to do all the assessments. Actually, if you went in, the introductory assessment gives you a good idea about an overall view of your tool. It gives you a score and it gives you the first set of recommendations. You can stop there if you want. Um, you know, if you're not sure you want to do something deeper, that is available to you. You can invite as many colleagues into this tool as you want, and you can choose whether you want the colleague to be an administrator on the tool or simply your collaborator. A collaborator just gets things assigned to them. They don't see the dashboard that I just showed you. Only administrators can see the dashboard, see all the team members, and manage them. Uh, there's a print capability that I showed you, and you can print anything on the tool. You can print your recommendations, you can print your assessments, you can print your questions. Many folks have asked us uh, to provide this print feature because they want to print out the questions and have conversations with their team. You can do that. Uh, the org dashboard provides you everything in one place, hopefully makes it easier for you to think through your digital transformation goals and understanding the score that your org has. And then finally, we've provided software comparison sheets. Um, so if we, if we recommend two or three different softwares, 
the comparison sheet actually pulls information from the TechSoup catalog. So you can quickly get an overview of these softwares um, to make a decision on which one that you want to use. Um, so that's that covers um, everything I have. I've provided a little more information around these features um, that I'm not going to go into because I've uh, shown them on the tool. You can experience the data for yourself. Uh, it's a free account. Um, you know, it's on assessment.techsoup.org. You can just sign up. The first person that sign, signs up becomes an automatic administrator, um, or you can choose other administrators once you set up the account. Um, and then if you have any questions, please direct all your questions to assessment at techsoup.org. That's my email for the DAT. So I'll be really happy to receive your questions and to help you in any way that I can. All right, so before we go any further, I would love to answer all of the questions that I see in Q&A. Okay, um, Ken, it's Ken and DJ, their questions are kind of one of the same. Ken started the DAT, but there were other people who didn't complete their sections. So he wants to know, can he complete the process without their input? Yes. So Ken, if you are an administrator in the DAT, you can actually go in and um, actually let me show you right here. Um, so see, for example, if you had assigned hardware and infrastructure, uh, infrastructure to someone else on your team and they hadn't finished it yet, you can actually go into the dashboard, click on it, and you can see like here it shows um, you know, that, that the tool hasn't been, here it's been completed, but it could show that it's incomplete or still in process. You can simply type your name, right? So I can, I can um, type my name. Oops, it would help if I knew how to spell my own name. Huh. Oh, because it's me. Um, I can't use me, let me just use someone else and then assign it to them. Uh, if you wanted to do it yourself, um, you can unassign this person that you've assigned it to that did nothing with it, right? Like I just did, and you can see this came back. Simply start the assessment and you can finish it yourself. So the tool has a lot of that flexibility if you're an admin. If you're not an admin on the tool, you have to ask your administrator to do this. And if you want to become an administrator, you can always write to us. Okay, and I think you answered the question about having more than one individual complete the initial assessment. That is not possible. Um, because the initial assessment, the what we call the introductory assessment, is a baseline assessment. The way the tool is structured right now, it cannot be done more than once. Um, so if you have, so if you've already finished it, that's your baseline. If you need to do it again, you need to write to us. And then what we will do is we will delete all your data and ask you to redo that assessment so you can get a proper baseline. If you have someone doing this assessment and they've not finished it, you can do the same thing that I just did with the other assessment. As long as the assessment's not finished, you can go in and finish it like the other assessments. If it's finished and you want to do it again, you need to reach out to us. Okay, DJ said, is there a way to document the results so that people outside the team can view it? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so see, for example, um, you can see that this assessment has been done three times, right? So say you wanted to take the latest results, see there's a C results under each time you did the assessment. You can actually click on it. And then if you wanted to share this, right? You can share your assessment responses simply by taking that print and print to PDF, right? And share it with everyone. You can also look at the recommendations. So here there were no new recommendations generated, um, but if there were recommendations, you would be able to share that as well.
Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> Dawn said, we have multiple locations. Can we have multiple, I guess people complete the same questionnaire, multiple complete the same questionnaire? Um, at the same time, no, unfortunately, just because the tool, you know, we're, um, if you have someone in the assessment, you can't have the same question answered by multiple people. Um, so I would recommend that, for example, if you needed multiple inputs, it's a good idea. Um, I'm going to go into this assessment. Or so multiple locations. Say like it's um, say like it's if it's Goodwill in Orlando and Goodwill in Port Charlotte, can they each do their own? They have to have two separate accounts. They have. They can have two separate accounts and do their own assessment. That's totally fine. Okay. Okay. Um, Kevin Frost asked a good question. Has TechSoup used this tool for itself? And if so, what was the score? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Um, so TechSoup is is a pretty, um, I would say, complex organization because we have so many different programs that we're delivering so there are other there are certain programs that have used the assessment tool um not all of not all of us have um and uh, you know the 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 results have been up and down so there are certain programs that do better in certain areas than than others so it, it's certainly been a learning experience for us as well I think that's it. Um, that was it for the questions. Um, Elizabeth just put a comment in the chat. Do you see it, Mona? Uh, I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, thanks, Beth. Uh, it's yeah, that's right. Beth is Beth is leading ops for TechSoup, and she she and I are absolutely working on on getting the rest of TechSoup on the tool. Thank you for that. Okay, DJ did put a question in here. He said, kind of unclear here. Is it possible to have several people assigned to an assessment part so as to give diverse opinions? So, um, DJ, I'm glad you added the clarifying question. Um, so, this is an example that I have up on my screen of an assessment. You can only have one person do an assessment at a time, right? Um, so if you needed multiple viewpoints on the assessment, highly recommend. Uh, so you can see here at the assessment, you can print out this assessment, have a conversation, decide on your answers, and then come in and have one person fill it out. Alter alternatively, there might be certain questions in the assessment that only one person can answer. So this becomes a little more complex to handle. So say, for example, I did not know about the hardware and software in the organization. And I'm like, hey, you know, this is a question um, that only Natalia can answer. So you can actually go in and assign Natalia the assessment. The problem is that if Natal Natalia finishes the rest of the assessment and she's not supposed to, then, you know, you probably have to redo that assessment. So it's a little bit like passing the baton. If you wanted an assessment to be done by multiple people, it's possible. Uh, but I think it's too much of management given how the tool is today. So I would highly recommend it's way better to just simply download, print out the assessment, have that conversation offline, and then come in and fill out the answers um, online. It's a great answer. That's it for the questions for the q and A. I've got some links in the chat room. Mona, you want to um, close this out when you're ready? Absolutely. Um, so just in closing, you know, we've, we've kind of gone through the questions. If you have any questions, please reach out. I'm sure once you try to start using the guide and you start using the tool, you have other questions, please. We're always here to answer them. Assessment at techsoup.org. You can always reach out to us. And then um, I don't have anything else to add, except we do have a um, an incentive and a coupon for everyone that's on this webinar. We have a new course that is coming up in April, which is Nonprofit Website Strategy. All of these courses that we are creating are based out of what we are seeing 
as issues that nonprofits have or areas that nonprofits need help with. Um, our, you know, our training team, our instructional design team actually goes in, works with experts in the field that understand how nonprofits work and the help they need to craft these courses. Um, so the nonprofit website strategy course is a six week course that starts April 5th. Um, and it provides a very, very basic overview to help nonprofits that don't have a website strategy or to want to rethink their website strategy to come up with um, a strategy. So it provides a very basic framework. It is by no means a advanced level course. This is for organizations that need help with building the first set of website strategy. And then if you're interested, uh, web, you know these webinar participants have a $100 discount on the course. So you, you can use this coupon and get that discount. And again, if you have any questions about this, Aretha and I are available. So thank you so much for attending. Thank you for listening to me. And please don't forget to reach out. Thank you.